Hey everyone, and welcome back to Fistful of Feminism. My name is Monica, and today I want to talk about transnational feminism. So I am currently taking a course at the University of Victoria about transnational feminism. And for this class, we are doing a blog project in which we all contribute pieces to the blog online, on Tumblr, and this is one of my contributions. Transnational feminism is not necessarily a term that you might have heard before, and that's okay. So today we're gonna go over the basics of what transnational feminism is. My favorite definition of transnational feminism comes from Sylvia Tamale, who is a university professor, in which some of her work I will link to down below, but it is as follows. Transnational feminism represents the political and conceptual struggle by feminists to contend with globalization processes, and this transcends national boundaries, immigrations, race, class, sexualities, and the legacies of imperialism. So when Sylvia says to contend with globalization, we're talking about the idea of globalization as a global world, in which we are living in a context in which the entire world is accessible to us in some ways. And the processes of globalization can look like many different things, but think things like Skype, think things like corporations going all over the world, Think about the fact that you can travel pretty much everywhere. Those will all fall under a form of globalization. And so transnational feminism is looking at all of the intersections of identity. So things we've talked about on this channel before, like sex, class, race, racialization, ethnicity, nationality, disabilities, abilities, etc., and putting that in a global context. So like the definition says, looking at the legacies of colonialism, of imperialism, of global imperialism and factoring that into our feminism so that it is being as intersectional as possible. A definition I found from everyday feminism also adds to this definition. Transnational feminists examine issues from a global perspective while considering how they intersect with our lived experiences in the United States. Now this was written from the perspective of living in the United States so I wouldn't say that that's exactly the definition but it focuses on intersections across nationality including race and ethnicity, sex, gender, and class within the context of modern day imperialism and colonialism. Now imperialism and colonialism are two words that many people think are no longer applicable as they are outdated terms and they're things that happened a long time ago. What transnational feminism and all feminisms seek to do is understand how imperialism and colonialism play out in everyday situations and how they affect our lives today. They are still processes going on, and a lot of globalization is directly linked to imperialism and colonialism. So those are some definitions of transnational feminism, and I want to talk really quickly about some of the things that are being talked about right now in the field. One of the problematic discourses within transnational feminism is that the word transnational feminism has been sort of opted in instead of global or global feminism. But the word transnational means very different things than the word global. Yes, transnational feminism and globalization are inherently linked together, that does not mean that they are the exact same thing. So equating both of those terms together can sometimes blur the lines between what both of them are, and that can become problematic in analysis. So for our purposes, transnational and global are not going to mean the exact same thing. Some other problematic discourses that arise within transnational feminism are white Western feminists picking up the white savior complex. So as I'm sure you've seen on the internet and seen everywhere in your life, there is a tendency for white Western folks to generalize the other, the other places in the world that are not the West. These generalizations might sound like, all women are oppressed in third world countries. These discourses might say something like, why are we worried about Western women when they have achieved all their rights, when we really need to work on saving women in other places? So this discourse is inherently imperial and colonial, and puts us in this mindset that the West is the best, the West is somehow what needs to be achieved globally. What transnational feminists seek to do is understand the nuances and complexities of what it means to have all of these intersections that we talk about in feminism 
and place them in different parts of the world. Which brings me to the idea of cosmopolitanism, this idea that all people are inherently unified through some kind of force that transcends cultures and races and genders and yada da da da. It's the idea that our forms of patriarchy that we experience in the West are somehow the same across the board as patriarchies face throughout the world. This ideal often holds up the idea that there is some kind of universalized form of sexism that needs to be dismantled, which doesn't account for the different hegemonies and different culturally relevant pieces of information that we need in order to understand patriarchy or understand sexism or understand any of these things. Basically, there is no universal anything, and that's okay. Lastly, I want to bring up that within discourses of transnational feminism, it is very common that many Eurocentric forms of thinking will come into discourse without being questioned. And like I've said in a lot of my other videos, this is very difficult to overcome, to analyze, because if you've been brought up and indoctrinated with Eurocentric ways of thinking your entire life, it's one thing to name it, but it's another thing to constantly be naming it all the time. So with that information in mind, it's very important that all of us try to understand when we may be making Eurocentric assumptions regarding transnational feminism. Of course, this is a brief and fairly simplified version of what the definition of transnational feminism is, a few ideas as to what are going on in the discourses, and the fact that no one has all of the solutions yet. But what's important for me as a feminist is making this information accessible, making it so that this information is easier to understand because not all of us are going to come from a background of being educated in women and gender studies, of understanding terms like this at face value. So here I am starting the conversation for all of you on my channel and for all of you on this blog, just to start us understanding what transnational feminism is, what it can be, and how the field is evolving. Like I said, I've taken this class and I've had a wonderful time, but I have a lot of steps to go in order to fully understand some of the discourses that are surrounding transnational feminism. This is a new idea for me, and now that I have this information, I can do more research to understand what indeed transnational feminism means within my work, within all activist work, and so on. Whew, man, educational moments. And that is my contribution to our blog project. Thank you all so much for watching. Of course, this has been an episode of Fistful of Feminism in which I post videos here on my channel every second Friday or something to that avail. I've gotten a little behind, but what can you do? This video is in collaboration with Feminist Apparel. If you go to their online website and put in the code MONICA10, you will get 10% off of your purchase online and $3 will come back to Fistful of Feminism to help fund these videos. So please consider going and doing that. And as always, if you like, you can subscribe and go there and da 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 da. All right, that's it for me. I will see you all not next Friday, but the Friday after that. Okay, bye.